This is I'm Stuck, and today we will be looking at Henry VII's policies towards the nobility of the country. And one of the greatest challenges of Henry VII was gaining the support of the nobles while also limiting their power and stopping them from the country and having too much of a say. So in some cases, he did give the nobles land and he rewarded them. However, in most other cases, it was effective for Henry to show the severe consequences of not supporting him. So this meant that the nobility feared Henry in some ways and would not step out of line. So Henry still did require the support of the nobles as nobles were able to maintain laws in their areas. However, he also understood that the nobles did act as a threat to him because throughout the 15th century they had built up their land and their armies and this was all at the expense of the crown. So Henry was fortunate when he came to power in 1485 that leading figures um, in, fam in families such as Warwick and Buckingham had died and then they, um, they had left their inheritance down to the son, so they weren't as strong. However, throughout his reign, Henry attempted to reduce the wealth, the land and the support of the nobles with many different policies and these are the policies that we will start to learn about today. And the first policy we'll learn about is attainders. And attainders are special laws passed without the um, by Parliament without a trial. And Henry VII used many attainders from the start of his reign with nobles who he suspected of any disloyalty. And in some ways, these were extremely small cases. It's just Henry pounced on them to try and um, earn money and take away their power. Now, the suspected noble would have their land taken away from them, and this in turn would also increase the finances of, of the crown, um, which Henry was desperate to have. He wanted more money. Financial um, control was a very big aspect for him, as we will learn in the next video. So he did also reverse attainders, um, which was basically just giving the, the um, land back to the nobles, as he believed that this would secure the future loyalty of the noble. Um, and in fact, in th the 138 attainders that were passed in his reign, 46 of them were reversed. However, as another way of increasing these finances, some of the nobles did actually have to pay money to get their attainder reversed. So the next policy towards the nobility is patronage. And patronage is extremely common throughout monarchs, but it was less common under Henry VII. Patronage is where the monarch grants nobles land or rewards a group of people to gain their support. And it was used from monarchs such as Edward IV frequently. However, Henry VII only used this method a couple of times at the start of his reign, where he, where he basically rewarded the supporters of the Battle of Bosworth, um, such as Jasper Tudor, and we will talk about a few of these people later. But he didn't really want to reward too many people as he didn't want to create a new group of nobles who could offer any threat to the crown. So this meant that a number of nobles felt dramatically and Henry gained significant amounts of land so he became actually the main landowner in the whole of England. Now this meant that the number of nobles were falling because of the deaths and these attainders as well was, an, was the reasons for this um, decline of numbers and nobles. But those, there were some people who, who were rewarded with patronage and this included John de Vere who we've talked about who's become a landowner in East Anglia, Jasper Tudor his uncle who we talked about a lot in the first video and about um, the Battle of Bosworth and he was made Duke of Bedford. Uh, Lord Stanley retained control of Cheshire and Lancashire. So Reginald Bray, who was the brainchild behind Council Learned in Law, which we'll learn about a little bit later and more throughout this Tudor series. And he accumulated land in 18 different countries, which gave him vast finances. And Edmund Dudley, who was another man who was in control of this finance. And he was given the title of King's Counselor, which was extremely highly thought upon. Now, the next thing is about retaining, and Henry VII uh, did many attacks on retaining. And retaining was the way in which nobles kept many men as their personal staff. 
Um, and these men would be servants predominantly, but they also made sure that they got the no they made sure the noble got what he wanted. So, for example, they could act in juries to make sure that the verdict of the noble would be um, shown. And in Henry's reign, he started to pass um, laws against illegal retaining, um, and nobles would have to gain a special license from the king before they could acquire many men. Um, so for each illegal retainer in which they kept, there would be a £5 fine. Now, although this doesn't seem like very much at the moment nowadays, it was a vast amount in those days. Um, now, however, it didn't was a problem. It, did, it wasn't as effective as Henry VII would have wanted because, um, it, because the problem had been going on for so long, it meant that many nobles found ways in avoiding getting any licenses. So the final thing that Henry did was all about his financial controls on the nobility, as finance was a big area um, for the nobility and Henry VII himself. So Henry demanded a financial bond, which was basically a loan from many of the nobles. And by um, th the end of his reign, 36 out of the 62 nobility, uh, nobility families were under bonds. And these bonds would basically place the noble in debt to the crown, so they would have to remain loyal to the crown in future. Now, in order to collect these debts, Henry also set, it, set up with the help of Reginald Bray, the council learned in law, as we set up, um, as we talked about a bit earlier. And this was initially set up to deal with the king's fiscal matters, however it was later, later used as a legal device to enforce payments of debts, and investigate whether a nobleman was paying his proper dues to the king. And this was extremely um, important and many people were scared of it throughout the country, which helped people stay loyal to Henry VII. So I hope you enjoyed that video and next we will talk about all the financial controls of Henry and how he was a very shrewd operator in terms of keeping the finance, uh, financial controls of the country in good state. So thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.